Good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, starting from today, for the next three, maybe four weeks, I'd like to share a weekly district message uh, for our Friday, uh, Friday evening worship message. And I would like to share and distribute the message both in Korean and English. So uh, let us get started with prayer. Father, we thank you for gathering us. As we come together in worship and share your word, uh, may we be guided and be filled by your Spirit, so that we may come to understand everything you have given us, you have given us already in your grace. We pray in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen. So the title of today's message is Worship at the Tabernacle and Answer of 25. Exodus 27 verses 1 to 8. Uh, let me read the verse 1 and 8. Build an altar of acacia wood, three cubits high. It is to be square, five cubits long and five cubits wide. Make the altar hollow out of boards. It is to be made just as you were shown on the mountain. Amen. Um, it is undeniable fact that many people are in the midst of problems and conflicts and it is certain that we are not we are not an exception even our church um, so it is not about how to how how not to have those problems but it is all about what answers that we provide because god has called us as an evangelist evangelist is the one who has the answer the solution so what kind of solution what kind of answer we provide these people to these people that is important that is and that translates to our ability and power uh, we often think to ourselves and we also preach to others to overcome the problems, overcome those conflicts. And we think that we should be able to overcome or defeat our enemies. But that is where we fail. That is the very cause of our failure, our perpetual failure. Because that is not what we have been called for. That is not the purpose of God's calling us. Then what is the purpose of God's calling us? It is to save. Because we are evangelists. Our job, our task is to save, not to defeat and as you come, as you re, um, if you realize that, you will find out, and you will be, you will be taken 
by surprise to realize that it is actually, it is easier, easier to save than to defeat our enemies. Because that's how God has designed us. We, have, we are designed to do that, just that. And why, sh I mean, what's the point of doing something that we are not designed for or not we are, what we are designed to do, right? So we should get back to the original purpose of God, the original cause. Then our next question might be, okay, now we know what to do, then how? How should we save those? How should we provide answers and solutions to those who are in the, in the midst of problems and conflicts? Well, it's not about methods. It's all about what we are. We are the source of blessings. We are the blessing. We ourselves are the blessings. It's not that we receive blessings, but we are the source of blessings. It's two different things. To receive blessing is one thing, and being the source of blessings is another. Then, although you do not ask for this and that, you know, God will provide everything. So we should, we are supposed to focus on our job, our vocation, God-given vocation. Then God will provide us with everything else. And that's what Christ preached, um, that's what Christ preached to his disciples. So, uh, tabernacle uh, is tabernacle is the embodiment or representation of God's blessings, his ultimate blessing. Um, take note that God commanded the Israelites to build a tabernacle in the middle of the in the middle of their journey in the desert. Why not? Why not after the settlement in the promised land? Why not? Why in the middle of hardship, in the middle of nowhere? Why? Because tabernacle is the very tool for them to be successful in their journey. Tabernacle is the very instrument it is the very method for the Israelites to overcome all the hardships in the desert. So, uh, God, um, God commanded them to build the tabernacle not in despite all the hardships of the desert, but because of the hardships of the desert. God commanded them to build the tabernacle. And they were supposed to overcome everything, every hardship, every ordeal, every crisis through the tabernacle. And that's why God told them to build them. The tabernacle, building the tabernacle was not supposed to be a burden, but it, is, it was a necessity. And that tabernacle, we could say that tabernacle is uh, probably the most primitive form of the church. So tabernacle uh, was 
the next form of the church was the temple, which was built by David and Solomon. And tabernacle, temples, um, they are all, they are nothing but instrument to represent God's blessings. And that blessing was to be globalized. For that purpose, God has telling us, God has called us to build the church. So that is the purpose of the church. It is to globalize the blessings. So the church should be the source of the blessings, all blessings. Let's talk about the meanings or significance of the tabernacle. Number one, tabernacle represents God's being with us, God's presence together with us. That's what tabernacle represents. And that is the very essence of our worship. Okay, why do we worship? Is that because our uh, is that because of uh, is is that because worship is I mean God's commandment? Well, partly yes, partially yes, but not substantially. We worship because that worship is the very purpose of our creation. God's creation of us. So among all our human uh, human acts, worship is the most important act that we can do. Only mankind, only a human can worship. Worship is the very purpose of our life. Worship is the beginning of our life. So for that purpose, that is the very purpose, the worship is the very purpose of the tabernacle. So our, the purpose of our life is to worship, and to worship we need the tabernacle. In the, in the tabernacle there is an altar, Yes, worship. What is worship? Worship is build the altar. Building the altar entails not just spectating, but it entails your participation and devotion. And throughout the worship in the tabernacle, you will receive the word of God and as you hold on to that word you will experience God's power so that is what tabernacle represents God's presence with us secondly tabernacle represents God's salvation in the tabernacle uh, they practiced um, sacrificial offering, burnt offering, which represents sacrifice of Christ, which then represents the gospel. So, the tabernacle represents salvation through the sacrifice of Christ. And they were supposed to give the sacrificial offerings on a regular basis. And we, um, likewise, we worship on a regular basis. So why, what, why, why do we do that? Well, like I said, worship is the very purpose of our life, so we, that's why we worship. There's no other reasons. But secondly, through the worship, we restore the very essence of the gospel. And as we do that, as we do that, 
will be observed from many potential disasters and problems. You know, people, I mean, we uh, struggle to solve the problems or crises that surround us, right? But that's not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, we are supposed to focus on our job. Then God will provide the solution to our potential problems and crises. That's how it's supposed to work. Thirdly, Tabernacle also represents evangelism. Tabernacle was designed to be mobile. Not stationary, but mobile. So what does that tell us? Uh, we come together to worship, and then what? We should go out to our own field, our own fields. We have to go into the world, right? And as we do that, we bring all the blessings and grace that we have received in the tabernacle and transfer them, transfer those blessings to the world, to those unbelievers. So tabernacle, just as the tabernacle was um, engineered to be mobile, yes, we should go. We should we shouldn't be stationary. We should go. We should be we should always be on the move because people await us. The world's the world awaits us. And also the tabernacle we're supposed to go into the, the land of Canaan, the promised land. The promised, the Canaan represents the future, right? So, what that means is, uh, tabernacle also represents our future. So, brothers and sisters, it may be important that you receive answers and blessings at the moment, but what's even more important is your future. And that is what that is the that is one of the purposes of the tabernacle. As we build the tabernacle and as we worship, we are securing we are securing our future. Let's come to the conclusion. So, um, the conclusion is, number one conclusion, seven, 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 triple seven. Um, if you don't understand what the number stands for, um, I, can't, I, I don't think I will be able to explain that to you at this moment, because it might be quite lengthy, but it basically means uh, the partisans, partisans of God, seven partisans and seven journeys and seven uh, signposts. Conclusion number two, three courtyards. So the blessings of the tabernacle has been translated to the blessings of the church to us, for us. So in our church, what we need to restore is the three courtyards. The courtyard for healing, prayer, the courtyard for the remnants, and the courtyard for the Gentiles. And thirdly, and lastly, uh, we are living in the age of long weekends. Uh, the age of long weekend is um, one of 
the, one of the um, technical terms that we use in Darakpan. Uh, because many people think that they, all they have to do is just come to church on Sunday and worship and, and that's it. But no, because, because, because well, that's, that's, that's great. Right? That's great, but uh, we, we have no choice but to live according to what is imprinted in us. So we need to change that. For us to change our imprints, worshipping on Sunday may not be enough, may not be sufficient. Could be sufficient, but may not be. That's why we should design the church and our, uh, our church life to be able to not just spend a few hours in the church, but to, uh, to, to utilize long weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the church. So brothers and sisters, uh, like I mentioned in the very beginning of the message, um, so many people have fallen into unbelief. And there are so many families that are, uh, that are bound, in, bound by the darkness. Your, what they say to you might be able to deliver them. So it is very, it is so important. I can't stress enough the importance of what you receive through the message, through the worship, because you are the source of blessing. So those people will be blessed through you. So you are the main figure. So it is the most important thing for you to first enjoy all the blessings that God has in store to give to the world. Let us close our worship with benediction. Let us pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the great love of our Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be upon all the disciples who have come together to worship, now and evermore. Amen.